Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Kyle Richards, Goleta City Council member, also serving this evening as Mayor Pro Tem in Mayor Paula Parodi's absence tonight. She regrets that she can't be here. Welcome to this California State Lands Commission Town Hall meeting. This meeting is a follow-up to the last town hall in November of 2019 and will provide an, op an update on Platform Holly and Piers 421 decommissioning efforts along with an update on Elwood Onshore facility. The State Lands Commission staff and supporting federal, state, and local agencies, including the city of Goleta, are making steady progress on plugging and abandoning these facilities left idle because of the Venico bankruptcy in 2017. The coronavirus pandemic is affecting all of us, including the decommissioning efforts, and you will learn more about this in the presentation tonight. This town hall is particularly relevant to our community because you will see evidence of the transition away from fossil fuels. Indeed, old oil and gas platforms, piers, and wells are leaving our coastal waters for good. Our coastline along Elwood and Haskell's beaches will ultimately be restored to pre-oil development conditions. Our community and the environment are safer because of these decommissioning efforts, and for this, we can be proud. The presentation will be hosted tonight by the State Lands Commission staff. We have the Executive Officer, Jennifer Lucchesi, Senior Staff Counsel, Seth Blackman, Project Lead for Platform Holly Decommissioning, Jeff Plank, and Chief Petroleum Engineer, Steve Curran. For those of you have, who have joined us before, these people should look familiar. Supporting agencies in attendance tonight and working together with the state include the U.S. Coast Guard, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife Office of Spill Prevention and Response, the California Department of Oil and Gas and Geothermal Resources, Santa Barbara County, and UCSB, and of course, the city of Goleta, and in particular, I'd like to thank our advanced planning manager, Ann Wells. So I give you the State Lands Commission. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Good evening, and welcome to our Platform Holly and Piers 421 virtual town hall. I'm Jennifer Lucchesi, the State Lands Commission's executive officer. I wanna take a quick moment to thank Mayor Pro Tem Richards for his opening remarks and for making time this evening to help host this event. I also want to thank Mayor Perotti, the Goleta City Council members, City Manager Michelle Green, Ann Wells, and the entire city staff for their help and support in hosting this town hall event and in pursuing the safety commissioning of Platform Holly and Piers 421. Importantly, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight and for your thoughtful and meaningful engagement with us from the beginning of this project. In recognition that we are all meeting virtually, I hope you and your loved ones are all safe and healthy and that you continue to stay safe. Our goal for tonight is to provide you with an update on our decommissioning efforts of Platform Holly, the Elwood Onshore Facility, and Piers 421, as well as detail our next steps for this project in the immediate future. But before we get to those details, I want to introduce our State Lands Commission team participating this evening that you may see respond to comments or questions, make presentations, or just help in the background with the technology aspect of this. I am joined tonight by Jeff Plank and Seth Blackman and Steve Curran, who are essentially our project leads on this decommissioning effort. I'm also joined by Jennifer Maddox, our Tribal Liaison, and Sherry Pemberton, our External Affairs Division Chief. We are here um, also with our legal support, Joe Fable and Michaela Weimer, and helping us behind the scenes um, with the Zoom technology and facilitating public comment and questions are Katie Robinson Phillip, Phil Schlater, and Michael Farina. So you may see or hear some of them speak during tonight, and I wanted to let you know that they're all with the State Lands team. While these virtual meetings are becoming more routine, this is still a relatively new experience for most of us, and we appreciate your support and patience as we work together in this new medium, especially when we're so used to seeing each other face-to-face -face during these town halls. 
Uh, now I want to share um, quickly some instructions on how you can best uh, participate um, in this meeting so that it runs as smoothly as possible. Like I said, our primary objective is to not only provide an update on the decommissioning efforts, but also to address any questions or concerns you may have. And in order to do that effectively, I want to share some instructions on how best to participate and ask your questions. First, everyone, please make sure you have your microphones or phones muted to avoid background noise. If you'd like to ask a question or provide comment at the end of our presentation, you can do so in two ways. First, if you're attending on the Zoom platform, you can raise your hand in Zoom. And if you're new to Zoom and you joined our meeting using this Zoom application, click on the hand icon at the bottom of your screen. When you click on that hand, it will virtually raise your hand. Second, if you're joining our meeting by phone, you must press star nine, not the pound sign, but star nine on your keypad to raise your hand to make a comment. We will call on individuals who have raised their hands in the order that they are raised using the name they registered with or the last three digits of your identifying phone number. After you are called on, you will be unmuted so you can ask your question or share your comments. Please also remember to unmute your computer or your phone and identify yourself. Um, and please keep your comments respectful and focused. Um, we don't want to have to mute anybody that fails to follow these guidelines. And finally, as um, I mentioned before, you may hear me or some of our other colleagues um, refer to Katie or Phil or Mike. Um, they are our hosts for this meeting um, and they are working behind the scenes so that everything moves as smoothly and consistently as possible. Now, with all those housekeeping logistics out of the way and without further delay, I'm going to turn the mic over to Jeff Plank, our project lead um, on this decommissioning effort, and he'll be going through the details of the project updates. Jeff? Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Phil, can you bring up the presentation? Thank you, Jennifer, and good evening, everybody. Um, our the presentation tonight is, great, is uh, rather short, so let's get into it. Next. Since our town hall last November, 14 wells had their production zone, that is the geologic zone that was producing the oil and gas, cemented using coil tubing. Coil tubing is an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half continuous tubing that's run off a reel and run down the well through the steel tubing. It can clean out and cement the well inside the steel production pipe or across an open production zone. However, before we could finish the last three wells in that phase of the operation, we were forced to shut down in mid-March due to the pandemic. Shortly thereafter, and believing that the shutdown wouldn't extend as long as it has, a small four-man crew continued to maintain the equipment and to do some other work in preparation for the restart and using the drilling rig to complete the abandonments of all 30 wells. However, in June, it was decided to cold stack the rig, meaning all the rental and most of the movable equipment would be removed from the platform and the equipment that stayed would be secured and shrink wrapped or have corrosion inhibitor placed in the vessels or tanks to prevent degradation in the marine environment. Next. The decision to coal stack the platform was based on many factors. The two most pressing were the number of people required to perform the work. Generally, that's 30 to 40 uh, personnel on Holly at, at any given one time. And the lack of the physical space in which to keep social distancing requirements both on the crew boat and on the platform. The second was the cost of keeping and maintaining the equipment on the platform and the rental costs of most of that equipment as well as the personnel costs involved in quarantining crews. And once the realization that the pandemic requirements could easily last another six to 12 months, the decision was made to do the cold stack and to leave the platform. Next. On July 26, the platform work team completed the preservation, cold stacking and demobilization of the Holly rig equipment and all the Exxon Mobil and their contract personnel left the platform. The commission and its contractor, Beacon West Energy, will continue to staff the platform 
with reduced crew to maintain security, monitor the wells, and to maintain the equipment left behind. Next. Uh, these are some pictures of the cold stacking operation, just to add a little color to the presentation. Uh, all the wells are secured and shut in during this hiatus in the abandonment operation, and there are no fluid well fluids on the platform. Next. Going forward, the commission staff and ExxonMobil will meet regularly to assess the potential for restarting the work, guided by the evolving therapeutics for the COVID virus. Next. No operations have occurred or are planned for the Elwood offshore or onshore facility, sorry. Although we did install a new gen emergency generator at the facility because the old one kind of died. Due to the high cost of maintaining and inspecting the facility, plus the fees, preparing to take most of the idle equipment not being used to treat the minor fluids and gas out of service in order to reduce or eliminate these costs of the state. The status and eventual disposition of the facility is still tied up in the bankruptcy court. Next. I know that many of you are probably more interested in the status of the Haskell Beach uh, structures, so we'll dive right in. Next. The Commission, ExxonMobil, and Interact, the contractor engaged for the preparation and removal of the structures, are currently having preliminary discussions with the various agencies, landowners, and others, as well as doing some preliminary work in order to develop the plan for the removal. As discussed in the last town hall, the two wells have been completely plugged and abandoned. Also, as many of you are aware, there's also going to be a test for the removal of the soil inside the square caissons. This, the test was originally scheduled earlier this year, but was delayed through the nesting season, which saw many bird families in the roadside brush and in and around the structures. Next. The soil removal test will begin with clearing the overgrown vegetation on the access road to allow for the equipment to be placed in and around PRC 421 number two well. That's the one at the end of the access road. Uh, the company that will be clearing that vegetation, this is all new just today, they're going to start on uh, August 31st, next Monday. The, te the test uh, will use a method developed by the HydroX company, which uses high pressure water to loosen and semi liquefy the soil, which is then removed by a suction hose into a containment vessel. Once that vessel is full, the fluid is, and soil is transferred to a containment bin to be hauled off site. The method has been proven successful at the Elysol Canyon Gas Field Restoration, according to CalGEM, formerly the Division of Oil and Gas and Geothermal Resources. Next. If successful, the method for the soil removal from inside the caisson has a lot of advantages over conventional methods. First, we can avoid using uh, of the heavy equipment inside the caisson. Second, we can provide better containment during the soil removal. And third, we can allow for the evaluation of the structural, structural integrity of the caissons for ultimate removal. Next. The environmental review process is in the, in the planning stages. Once the determination on the soil removal is made, a complete project description will be developed followed by agency and public input to the document. The process is expected to take a year, putting any work on the actual removal of the infrastructure to sometime late next year at best. It's important that the actual work minimize work directly on the beach and that there will be safeguards in place, much like those during the well abandonment for the public and require some hopefully short-lived lack of access across the work area. Also, since it's anticipated that there's some oil contamination in the soils within the caisson, there will be the same preparations in place for immediate response should there be any release of contaminated contamination associated with the work. Next. This is a flow chart of the overview and an overview of the decommissioning process for these structures going forward. We're going to remove any of the fill and soil within the well cellars and the caissons cut and weld the cap plate over the wells at bedrock, deconstruct and remove the caissons, the big square metal and cement structures, uh, 
basically most of that work will be done from the piers. Deconstruct and remove the pier structures, abandon the pipelines from the piers to the Elwood onshore facility, and restore the site to its natural condition. Next. So I hope this has helped everyone understand what's going on, or in the case of Holly, what is not going on. I'll turn the podium back over to the, our executive officer to entertain any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so at this point, uh, we have, this would be the part when we were, when if we were all together at the city um, council chambers, where we'd open up um, the floor to any questions or comments. Um, so at this point, um, it looks like there's some folks already starting to raise their hand. That's great. Um, please, if you have a question or a comment, raise your hand in Zoom, or if you're calling in by phone, um, press star nine to raise your hand, and um, our team will start to call on um, you in the order that uh, you have raised your hand. Um, and so with that, um, Katie, maybe I'll turn it over to you to start um, identifying the first um, person that wants to make a comment or ask a question. Yes, thank you. So first we have Stuart Kasdan. Um, I'll ask you, I'll allow you to talk and then if you can unmute yourself, please. Uh, so uh, the question I had is when we're talking about uh, restoring to a natural condition, my understanding is that, however, the decisions on what to do with the platforms is still up in the air, how much to include, how much to retain, uh, and that's a topic for another day. Is that right? That's correct. Um, what we are doing right now is um, uh, developing the scope of the project for decommissioning the 421 piers and um, the related infrastructure associated with that. Um, in terms of the ultimate disposition of Platform Holly, uh, that, that process, that very public um, process that will involve an EIR and feasibility studies, that will not start um, for quite some time now because um, we've had to pause the plugging and abandonment work due to COVID. So it all um, is a, kind of a linear process. We have to get through a ma the majority of the plugging and abandonment work for the wells on Holly, um, and then we'll start um, setting out the process for how we're going to evaluate the ultimate disposition of the platform. And then we have the America's Green Corps. Um, so sorry, so it seems that um, America's Green Corps is using an older version of Zoom. So if you'd like to um, ask a question, if you could please use the call-in number. Um, in the meantime, we have Carrie Pinneman. Carrie, if you could unmute, there, unmute yourself. Hi there, I just wanted to say Thank you so much for this project. This is awesome. Great work. Thank you very much. We appreciate hearing that. We have, we have Jacob H. Lee. Jacob, you, there you go. Hi, Jacob. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, quick question regarding the work um, when it comes time to when it comes time to remove the uh, top side, will you hire locally? Um, are, are you? I'm sorry. Um, removing the piers is that what you're referring to? All all scope on all removal of this each project. Will you hire locally? I, I or no? Yeah. Um. So um, the question is complex, <laughs> or had the answer is complex, the question is simple. Um, we have hired a firm um, to um, uh, work with our existing contractors, Beacon West, to facilitate the decommissioning of the Piers 421. Um, uh, and um, I might have to turn it over to Jeff to talk about um, uh, 
some of the subcontractors if we know who those are at this point. As for um, Platform Holly, the actual plugging and abandonment work and then ultimately the decommissioning work will be headed up by ExxonMobil as they are primarily the responsible party for this. Can you make an agreement with them? We can consider um, what you're asking at this point. Um, we have entered into agreements, settlement agreements on their um, responsibility for um, paying for the ultimate decommissioning. Um, but I hear your, what you're saying and what you're asking, and we will take that into consideration. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye. Next, we have Linda Kropp. Hi, Linda. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Thank you very much again for hosting a town hall. Um, your agency has been really good about keeping everyone informed and I'm also providing information on your website. Um, so I had a couple questions. One is once the plugging and abandonment process restarts at Holly, how much longer do you think that will take, assuming no more suspensions? And then also one question we get quite frequently is um, regarding who's paying for the decommissioning um, that's between ExxonMobil and the state. Thank you, Linda, for the question. I think I might turn it to Jeff for the first question. And then Seth, can you help answer the second one? Hi, Linda. Um, once we start up again, which I think is hopefully just after the first of the year, uh, it should take us another 12 to 18 months to fully abandon all the wells. Thank you. Hi, Linda. How are you? Hi. <laughs> good, to, good to talk with you. It's been a while. So um, your question about the who's paying for the decommissioning. Um, primary decommissioning is being picked up by uh, ExxonMobil. The state, through the State Lands Commission, has a share of responsibility for what's called maintenance and op uh, operations, m &O. And so there is, a, there is a cost to the state based on um, kind of the way things were set and, and what was left by way of the bonding uh, for the Vinico um, lease that, that the state draws from. So it is, if we're talking about total values, and I think we provided this um, at a previous meeting and I know we've talked about it in the past if you look at the total cost of the entire project from its inception when the state uh, lands commission stepped into the, the role uh, in September 2017 to the end of all this <clears throat> assuming that this delay in time doesn't add other unforeseen costs um, the state lands commission is carrying a share uh, with the bond of roughly 70 to 80 million dollars uh, in total um, and that's reduced by the $22 million bond, and Exxon has a, about a $300 million share. Thank you. I'd like to ask if America's Green Corps was able to call in. If so, could you please hit star nine to raise your hand? Um, so we're still not able to get America's Green Corps um, to be able to be unmuted. Uh, at this time, we have no other hands raised. I, I thank you, Katie. I appreciate that. Um, I would just encourage um, America Green Corps to um, send us an email um, or give us a call on our office line, 916-574-1800. Um, during um, business hours, and so we can answer the questions if we can't get you in um, live tonight. Katie, it looks like we might have a couple of the other hands raised. Yes, so we have Jacob H. Lee again. Okay. Hi, Jacob. Did you want to add something to your previous questions and comments? Uh, totally new question, if you can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, so 
when it comes time to remove these platforms or even before then, I understand we're at a standstill now. Is that correct? Yes, more or less. <laughs> okay, so at least we're standing by to continue operations. Uh, excuse me. So where can we find out more as citizens uh, on these projects? And can we email you questions later? Of course, uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And right. one last one, as, as citizens, you know, what can we do to help um, with this or these projects? That's, um, that's a really great question. Thank you for asking. So in terms of follow up with us, um, as you digest information and, and questions pop up, please feel free to um, access our contact information over our website. Um, we have a specific web page devoted to this pla um, platform Halley decommissioning project. Um, I think there's even contact information on the flyer that went out for this town hall. So there's multiple ways for you to get in touch with us and we can follow up um, relatively quickly on um, responding to any concerns or questions that you have. Um, now, in terms of the last question you had, I think um, just everybody participating in town hall events like this um, and um, raising questions and concerns that you have as you have them, um, we want to be as transparent um, and responsive as possible as we move um, through this project, especially as we get to the bigger decisions involving the ultimate disposition of Platform Holly. And so hearing yeah. from all you and your colleagues are going to be really critical um, to help inform the decision makers on on all the different decisions that they're going to have to make in relationship to the in relation to this project. Um, thank you and very much. Thank you, Jacob. I was just going to add too that um, in addition to these town hall events that we do, you know, a couple times a year, and we'll continue to do even in this virtual capacity. I do provide updates on um, the platform holly decommissioning project at each of our state lands commission meetings, um, which occurs every two months. And our um, schedule for those commission meetings are also on our website. And um, so you can get, um, you know, uh, more consistent updates um, through that um, kind of portal of information as well. Roger that. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Do we maybe don't have any other, oh, sorry. We don't have any other hands uh, hands raised at the moment. Okay, I, yeah, I, I'm seeing American Green, Green Corps, but we can't facilitate their um, un, um, unmuting their phone or microphone. Okay. All right. Um, so with that, that's um, really the conclusion of our update. And if there aren't any um, questions or any additional um, comments, um, we're set to end this virtual town hall event. Um, and um, we'll just continue to plow ahead and keep everybody updated um, as we move along. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, do you have anything you want to say in conclusion? Just thank you. I appreciate your uh, being here tonight or, or being wherever you are, <laughs> as it were. Uh, and uh, thank you for your ongoing efforts to do this. I, our, this is something our community obviously supports, and we're very happy to have you uh, do this work, and we really are eager to see it continue whenever that's possible. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And I, I, I actually, as we were just um, concluding, it looks like we have another hand raised. Um, Katie, can you help Yes, us? we have Sean Cromelin. Um, Sean is also using an older version of Zoom, so I'm unable to give him access to mute. Um, so um, lesson learned too is um, when we advertise for our next town hall, we will also advertise for everybody to update their Zoom accounts and plat so that we get the most um, recent um, platform so we can hear from everybody. But again, Sean, um, 
as I mentioned in the past, please feel free to contact us through um, contact on our website or through the in, um, contact information on our flyer that went out for this town hall event. And we can answer any questions or address any concerns that you have um, uh, separately. Oh, and we have somebody else, it looks like. Yes, we have Sean Cummings. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Sean. Hi, I was just wondering if I, you could either repeat or provide a little bit more detail on what the process is for determining when uh, work will resume on Platform Holly. I think I heard you guys say that the commission will meet regularly to discuss the resuming of work. Um, how can you tell us like how regularly that would happen? Um, what factors are at play? How much is it up to uh, the commission versus other, other forces at play? Jeff, do you want to start? Sure. Um, okay, well, it's pretty much dependent on what happens uh, with the COVID situation and the pandemic itself. Because Holly is so small, we'll ha and because we have to use a crew boat to get all the employees out there, uh, it's really tough for us to do the social distancing. Um, so in fact, until uh, the social distancing uh, requirement is relaxed or terminated, uh, or until there's a therapeutic to treat the virus or even a, uh, a, vaccine, a vaccine to uh, quell the, the virus, uh, we're probably not going to get back to work until one of those situations uh, develops. I, I can't tell you when that's going to happen. I don't think anybody can. Thank so, you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Sean. Um, and um, it looks like we don't have any more hands raised, but I did get a note that um, uh, the Santa Barbara Free Divers um, Association or community has a question about what role does uh, Bessie's and I'm reading this quote unquote, idle iron policy play in Holly's final disposition. Um, I'm not actually familiar with that specific policy. Maybe it's named something different, but um, just generally speaking, um, uh, Bessie does not have any direct jurisdiction over platform Holly um, because it's in state waters. So the ultimate um, determination um, about the um, disposition of platform holly really rests with the state lands commission and of course heavily informed by um public the public process and um what the community the region and the state at large um uh what's in their best interests so i hope that answers your question they were having a bad connection and couldn't get in so with that, um, it looks like we actually might really be done with um, with uh, hands being raised. <laughs> um, and I don't want to um, hold people longer than they need to, especially during this um, evening time, dinner time. Jennifer, so, uh, Jennifer, just a quick quick question. You know, given the, you know, we're we're facing the challenges with our our uh, public participation. You know, through. Um, Zoom events and through our online meetings as well. So I, I'm glad to see that there were so many people participating, but it also is frustrating when people are trying to participate and then unable to. I, I just want to see maybe there might be op opportunities in the future to participate, perhaps by sending in questions through email in advance or even in email during the event if people are not able to uh, uh, connect uh, the way they would like to. So I, I just want to put it out there that perhaps as we do this, you know, as we learn and move forward, that there might be other opportunities to try to encourage participation as well. I think that's a wonderful idea. Thank you. And we will certainly um, work to implement those ideas for the next one. Great. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for being here. Yeah. All right, everyone, thank you for participating um, and for continuing to help us work through this project and all your smart um, uh, questions and comments. And we look forward um, to providing additional updates in the future. Have a wonderful night.
Thank you. Be safe. Thank you.